Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hall H Show. I am here with uh, Keith and Jones. He's no stranger to the podcast. Uh, we're at Panel's uh, Comic Book and Coffee Shop here in Oceanside. And uh, Keith, and how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm here at Panels in Oceanside, first time. Um, I think they've been in, they've been around for uh, maybe a year, two months. So this is super brand new out here in Oceanside. It's a very nice place. Have your coffee, have your comic, and eat it too. <laughs> or is that drink it too? <laughs> drink it too. Well, they, they have pastries also. Pastries, I, I had I had one of their, their blueberry pies. It was pretty good. All right. Hey. Shout out, shout out to Hall H. <laughs> We're all be supporting indie um, comic book artists and other artists. Um, it's, good, it's great to. That's right. Great to have that, you around. That, that's what we do. That's what we do. Sure. Um, <laughs> what, what's new? Uh, well, I've had issue one, two, and three of the Power Knights out for about a year now. Great. Um, and I have a. I'm, I'm currently working on Power Knights for PK four. And I have a Kickstarter in the works that I want to um, debut later this year. I don't have an exact date, so I'm hoping you all support that. Um, this one, I really think I, I really think I stepped it up ten times on this one. Um, I think it's going to be a unique comic book. Um, I'm pushing it artistically with the with the art and the writing. Um, so if you're a fan of the series, uh, a lot of things will be a lot of the the story will be revealed and resolved. Um, the series itself goes to five, and then after that, I'll have a trade paperback. But uh, right now, I'm working on four, and I and I'm really excited about it because I think it's going to be probably the best one of the whole series. And uh, like I said, there'll be Kickstarter attached to that, so I'm really hoping and counting on you guys to support that. And for those of you who don't know who Keith and Jones is, uh, he's been on the podcast a couple of times, and he's. Uh, Owner of uh, Kid Comics is a publishing company, and the and the writer creator of the Power Knights. It's a story that has been in his head since he was 11 years old. <laughs> so it's an awesome book. So uh, if you guys are out there yeah, listening to the podcast, go go check it out. Yeah. Um, so you were recently at another con um, called Mecca Con. Uh, Mecca con you, want, you want you want to talk about that one a little bit? Yeah, my second time in Detroit for Mecca Con, which is headed by my Maya, Maya Crown Williams. Uh, you can find her on Facebook, either under her name, Maya Crown, or uh, MeccaCon. Just look it up. It'll pop up. Um, they're based in Detroit. Uh, we did it at the downtown Detroit Library, and that re went really well. Uh, it's primarily African-American comic book artists, uh, but it's open to all. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a great venue to give people or artists who otherwise don't have, have limited resources as far as uh, displaying their work. Uh, so that went really well, had a good turnout, um, at least I did, I know I did. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just continuing the journey of, of, of my, my personal journey of becoming a successful comic book um, artist, writer, and um, entrepreneur as far as publishing goes. So, so far so good. Um, I don't. I really don't have much else. I don't really have anything negative to say other than um, there's times where it's challenging. Obviously, uh, this is not a. It's not an easy profession to stay in because some days you feel like no one's paying attention, but then you have days where it's like the world's open up to you and you're, and you're you're getting a lot of positive responses and it just propels you to continue on. So. So, so how how do you stay positive outside of you know your how, how do you how are you able to, to stick to the daily grind of, of creating something? Um, first of all, I love it. I think that's really the real reason I've stuck around so long. Um, secondly, through the response of readers, you know, if I I've, I've been doing it for three years now, a little over three years, so I would I would have stopped a long time ago if I didn't have any type of response. Like if I sat here and no one showed up and no one ever bought my books, then Obviously, I'd be in a different headspace, you know, be contemplating my life. <laughs> uh, but fortunately for me, uh, it seems to be trending in the right direction. And uh, even though the real world intervenes, like uh, recently, like recently, I just had surgery on on my mouth because I had a tooth infection. So, and I continue to work on issue four through that pain. But I'm not one to post that on social media. Like I'm when I'm going through stuff like physical pain or I'm sick or a family member passes away or, you know, financial issues and stuff of that nature. And we, we all go through it. But I try not to burden people 
with those stories and just keep it positive and keep them focused on the art and the book because that's what I'm doing it for. Like I want, I know everyone has their daily grind and they need some type of escape and I want to provide that, that escape for them. Through my, through my art. Speaking of stories, let's go back to the Power Knights. Um, the first few issues dealt with the uh, introduction of the brothers mm -hmm. and then now you got uh, the, the big bad in there in the mix. Um, what's gonna, are there any things you could tease us with for uh, issue, f issue four? Issue, issue four is actually, is, um, right now it's called uh, the Power Knights Four Formation. Because this is when, without giving away spoilers, this is when they really coalesce into a unified, they have a unified purpose. They come together basically as a team. Um, on the surface, the Power Knights look like, you know, superheroes, but it's, I think it's more of a science fiction story that, you know, because since they come from other worlds, you, you know, you think they're wearing costume, but they really wearing that natural garb. So it's not technic to me, it's not technically a superhero story. It's just, it's just science fiction. Um, but since they're on Earth, you know, they can be confused as superheroes. And they themselves don't think of themselves as heroes. They're just in a, they're just, they're in a situation where one of them feels that if you have the power to make your own peace in the world, why not do it? Like if you had the power of Superman, why not force the world to force mankind to be peaceful, right? Because you have power to do that. Like you, but really do, but really like, like do the, you like have the, that like power. the like the quest for peace when you yeah. <laughs> yeah do you really have that power? Because can you really force someone to do right? Can you really force someone to like you? Can, you know that's what this story is about. It's like some people believe you can force their philosophy on others because they have the, the means to do so. Whereas others feel that everyone should have a choice to live their own, to choose their own path in life, whether that's good or bad. What's important is having li the liberty to do it. That option, those options, you know what I mean? And so that's really what the story of the Power Knights is about. They have, they're, they're, they're alien warriors from another world now on earth with the option to either take earth through force or live in harmony with mankind and that's where the conflict begins and this there's two boys these two humans this boy this the two brothers the young brother and the older brother by circumstance and by accident get caught up in this mix and their relationship is turned upside down because of it so they're questioning their love their, the love between the two brothers is, is tested also because now they're um how do i say their 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 natural life, their normal life is is altered and and, and enhanced by having this encounter with these aliens. You know what I mean, because they were having problems before that happened, <laughs> and now and now add this into the mix, so it, it, it amplifies everything. Plus, their father's passed through through cancer. They lost their father through cancer. So the older brother was was burdened with the with being the being the father to his younger brother, mm -hmm. but he gets scarred in the process of meeting these aliens. So he's kind of spinned off into his own personal rage, um, and dealing with this newfound power, but at the same time not necessarily knowing what to do with it. Especially with 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 Candle being the youngest one, and he he lose, he's sort of lost his older brother, his father figure for for a little bit there. Right, and that's Can Candle being the youngest one. This is. Hi, how are you? This is Candle, and matter of fact, they should see this scene here. This is where everything changes. If you can see that, his older brother find um, his older brother warns him of what he saw, and that basically changes their entire world. Without giving you guys spoilers, so the younger brother, the two brothers lost their father, but now the younger brother has lost his old. He hasn't lost his older brother, but his older brother's life has been changed to the point where it's like he could lose him. So Candle's really concerned about making his world whole again and getting things back to normal. Whereas the older brother is like, I have power now myself through this accident or through this attack on me. And what am I going to do with this power, you know? So it's like, I'm trying not to give you guys spoilers. So if it sounds a little convoluted, I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> just try to avoid ruining the story for you. But, um, but basically that's what's going on, yeah. <laughs> um, have you watched the the recent Voltron? Oh yeah, I love it. Uh, Princess Allura al almost reminds me of uh, Princess Raxi. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, 
That's true. Yeah, because because Princess Rax in my story, my princess has her father basically set everything into motion through his actions, and um, basically he is. Uh, I don't want to know. I could say he's he's power hungry, but at the same time, his power hunger comes from a paranoia of of just wanting to like control his own destiny, and he had the knights brought together just to do under under a mind control to do just that, to conquer worlds for me, you know? And so the princess, that's being her father, she's conflicted because she didn't, you know, she didn't share those thoughts, but that is her father. And now she's tasked with the burden of, kind of like Luke Skywalker, like finding out that Darth Vader is his father. It's like, dang, Yoda wants me to take care of him. But at the same time, that's my dad, you know? So. <laughs> no, Spoiler that's alert. not true. Yeah, it's true, bro. <laughs> so, um, so what's what's next for for Keith and what what other projects are you working on besides Power Nights? Oh, good question. Um, what am I? What else am I working on? Um, are you still teaching that class at Platt? Uh, not currently. So not until they get another class, another set of students for me. So. You were, uh, it was about comic book creation. Uh, okay. I did it for eight weeks, my first time being a, uh, a college professor. You want to maybe uh, tell us about that experience a little bit? Um, sure. Um, it was interesting. It was really fun. Um, at first, it was um, nerve-wracking. I never did it, so I wasn't sure what to expect out of myself or the class. <laughs> Um, but about the third day, I got into the groove of it, started to feel a little more natural for me. Um, and we covered the gamut from the technical side of making comics to the history of comics, from, uh, from the days of um, the creation of Superman to Jack Kirby to Will Eisner. We touched on those things slightly because I felt like the students should have some type of real comic book history foundation so they so if you don't have a foundation it's hard to move the move the genre forward or the art form forward because you're just regurgitating what's already there but if you have a foundation then you can take it from there and move on and take those elements to the next natural evolution you know of the art um if that makes any sense um but i had a good time the students at least the feedback was like they really enjoyed it they learned a lot um and I'm, I'm pleased to do it again if they ask me to. That's, it's always good sort of connecting with, with the next generation of, of creators. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, so speaking of, of the future, uh, what's next for Keithan? Ooh. I have stories floating around in my head. Some of the stuff I've jotted down at home. I have concepts and things floating around. I'm not really ready to speak on it because they're still fragmented. Uh, but... It probably won't be superhero traditional based stuff. It'll probably be a little more on the wild side, a little, little more funky. Um, but the Power Knights, that's a childhood dream of mine. That's a childhood thing I created, and it's something I just needed to get out of my system. And I thought it, especially starting kid, being a, I'm, a, I'm my own publisher, and I wanted the Power Knights to be the first book under the banner to come out because there's a pers I have a personal connection to it, and um, and I just I generally think it's a great story. I really, I really like the characters. I think people, if they really sat down and read the book, they're gonna they'll get into it and they'll see what I see. And um, yeah, that's all, you know. And as far as the future goes, I just want to take the company. I just want to be a uh, be right there alongside Marvel and DC and and Image. You know. Uh, we addressed this in a past podcast, but why is it important, or why was it important to you to start your own publishing company? <laughs> to greenlight my own projects, to greenlight my own vision, because not everyone can see. So yeah, not not everyone's going to see what you see. You know, some people may think that what you think is a good idea. Um, there might be ten other people who think it's a bad idea. And if those ten other people, if one of those other people has the power to kill your idea, then that you know that sucks. You know, so why not just give myself the power to greenlight my own project? You know, if I believe it in enough, why not? You know? um, plus. It allows me, when I get to a, a financial situation where I can start um, hiring other artists to in, to produce books under the banner, that's the ultimate goal, because I don't envision myself doing this forever. 
I want to sit back and let a, the younger generation have a shot that they wouldn't necessarily get at a Marvel or DC or even Image. You want to talk about the other books that are under the uh, the Kid Comics umbrella? Oh yeah. The fine arts teacher. His his class would get together with the writing class every year to create a comic book. So I I went in and spoke to their class. So there's currently there's three other creators (laughs) under Kid. Um, Chris Ward, who helps co-write the Power Knights, he created a character called Vegas Baby. This is an adult comic. Um, He has a Kickstarter coming out later this year also. Um, There's Dragonfly by William Tenner, Michael William Tenner. He's up to issue four. Uh, if you go to the kids' site, if you go to the kids' site, you'll see all of these books available for sale currently, like right now. Um, there's Dragonfly. He's like it's like a alien espionage spy story. Um, a lot of if you're into like conspiracy theories about aliens and Area 51 and all this stuff, this is your book. Uh, then there's my book, of course, The Power Knights. There's Princess Roxy right there, uh, and then there's Purge. Purge is Roosevelt Pitt's book. Um, Purge actually was a very popular book back in the, back in the early 90s. He sold like over a million copies. And so he's reintroducing the character to the modern audience. And he currently has issue one out. He's working on issue two. And uh, that's about it. Like if you want further details, just go to kid-comics.com. And you can read the synopsis. You can look at some of the character artwork and some of the actual pages from the book. Um... You can also buy from. Yep. You can buy the book from there. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I think the prices are reasonable. We include the shipping costs. I think. I think we only charge it. I know I only charge a dollar for shipping. So. You can either go to McDonald's and get yourself a, Mac, a number one and pay like eight dollars, or you can buy one of our books and have it forever. Right. That's right. Uh, so, um, where can people find you on social media? I'm on Twitter. I am KJ Kidcom or Kidcom KJ on Twitter. I am on uh, face Kid Comics Online Facebook, Kid Comics Online. Um, or you can just look up my, uh, look up Keith and Jones on Facebook. I'm there also. Uh, I'm on. Um, did I say Twitter yet? I did. I did, did Twitter. Uh, oh, Instagram. Instagram. Instagram is KJ Kidcom. Right. Instagram is KJ Kidcom. I'm not good at this. KJ Kidcom. Twitter is Kid Comics KJ. <laughs> Kid Comics KJ. KJ Kidcom. KJ Kidcom. Yeah. KJ Kidcom. Put in Kid Comics. Keith, and you'll find me. Cool. Well, thank you for your time, Keith. Thank you. You guys support Indie Comics. We need you. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.